Today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial in DaVinci Resolve on how to do a callout and animate a line to call out a specific subject. So within DaVinci Resolve we're going to be working mainly in the Fusion tab and the Fusion tab will have a couple of objects that we work with. We'll work with the background node, we'll work with the paint node, we'll work with the merge node, and we'll also work with the tracker node. So when you're doing a callout in DaVinci Resolve you don't have to track the object that you want to call out. It makes your videos a little bit more dynamic and gives a little bit of depth to the scene that you're trying to create. We'll go ahead and open up DaVinci Resolve. I'll pull my clip into the timeline and this is a clip that I took when we were over in Switzerland um, last year. So I'll go ahead and pull this clip into Fusion. And now that we have the clip in the Fusion tab, we'll go ahead and make this one viewer so you can see it. This is in our media one is selected. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is shift spacebar. Shift space will add our tracker. And this is just gonna be a normal tracker. I'm gonna do a separate video where I go through the difference between a tracker and a planar tracker. So then we'll do hold shift, drag this on to here if it didn't already merge with it. And so now that you have the tracker in the media one, what you're going to want to do when, now that it's up here is take this tracker, move it down to the object that you want to track, make sure you're starting at the beginning of the clip, go over to your inspector tab, and in the inspector tab you're going to need to go over to the operations and hit operation match move. The reason we're selecting match move is because anything that you put into the tracker node is going to move with the tracker and it'll, it pretty much means it moves with the scene. So now that I have the match move foreground over background, I'm going to go back and hit track from forward. So this will track it from the very beginning of the clip. So I'm going to go ahead and let this go through. Alright, so everything works successfully. So. Now that this is here, I'm going to show you what it's like, what happens if you actually take the tracker away and just put text. So I'll do shift spacebar, type in text, text plus, add that in here. Let's go ahead and call this out as a church. Actually, no, let's call it. I believe it's, the spelling may be wrong, but I believe it's Reed Morel. Might be... E before I, who knows. So this goes right here, this is where I want to call it. But so now if I play this this way, notice that the text is just kind of there. It's not tracking with the church, it's not tracking with anything, it's just kind of floating on the screen. So that's the whole reason behind actually tracking your subject. So I'm going to put the tracker back, I'll do shift spacebar again, and this time I'm actually going to go for the paint node. So I'm not going to do uh, mask paint, I'm just going to do normal paint, and we'll add a little background node as well. That did not work right, so I'm going to get rid of that merge node. You're going to take the background node, put it into the paint node, and starting off in the background node, we'll start off the background, make sure your alpha value is zero. So we'll take that all the way down so we have a transparent background to work on. Go into the paint node again, you'll just take whatever color you like, um, make sure it's selected, and then you'll go up here to the top left typically and click um, the spline tool. So this will allow you to do a multi-stroke, so you can click here, do whatever kind of call out you would like. And the reason this is not showing on the screen right now is it's, I don't have this selected up in the media viewer, so I'll just go ahead and throw that up there. So now you can see the line that we're working with. So that's my line so far. I'm going to actually go into, I believe it's brush controls, and change the size a bit, and soft play with the softness. So I don't want it to be too soft, and I don't want it to be that big. All right, so that's about what I want the line to look like. So I have this background node, have our paint node. Now I need to merge the two together so I can see what's happening. You can take the paint output and put it into the uh, background node or foreground node of the tracker. And then we'll go back to our media out, put that in here, and as you can see, everything is merged into our clip. 
So I'm going to go ahead and select, let me select the paint tool, select my mouse button, and I'm going to move this line right over here. So now I have the line with the church, and if you hit play, play it forward, you can see that the line is tracking with that church, so it kind of stays down there. It's not just floating on the screen. Um, so the next thing I'm going to want to add to this is I'm actually going to want to add some text to call this out. We'll do a text plus, add it here. All right, so we'll go to the text. We'll type in whatever you want to call out. You can make it whatever size you need. And then I'm going to move it over here. Now that we have our text and our line on here, that's pretty much the call out that you would go with. So we have the line tracking with the church. We have the text tracking with the church because everything is feeding into our tracker. So I'm going to make the text and the line a little bit more dynamic. So let's go ahead and stop this, go from the very beginning, keyframe my text. I'm going to keyframe the size, and I'm also going to keyframe the right on. So there's many ways that you could make this text right on and the line right on. The main methods that I'm going to use are the right on tools in the text, and I'm also going to use the right on in the brush controls for the paint. So within text one, I'm going to go back here, I'm going to make it right this way. So I'm going to take everything to zero with our text so it's gone on the first frame. I'll go down to paint one and I'm going to go down into stroke controls. I'm going to add a keyframe and I'll do the same thing. I'll just take that tech, that line all the way down to zero. So now for at the very beginning of the scene everything is going to be keyed at zero. So I'll take paint, I'll take this paint node, let's go to 60 frames out. Actually, let's go to 40 frames out, add another keyframe into the right on, and then go to 60, and then by 60 it'll all be written on. So I'll do the same thing for my text. So for text, once the line gets written on, I'll do a keyframe here, add a right on, so this line the line just finished at 60, so that's when I want my text right on to start. So I'll put a keyframe at 60 frames for the text, and I'm going to go it's probably 74 and do a right on just like that. So this is what it'll look like if we play it from the very beginning. You have the line writing on, and you have the text writing on right after that. So I don't want the text and the line to float the whole time this scene would be playing. So the next thing I'll do is just add keyframes to end it. So now that we have these on here, let's give the viewers enough time to actually see it and digest what's happening. So we'll start it right here. Uh, let's just make it 140. So I'll go here with my text. I'll start with the text at 140. It'll be there. At 150, the text will be gone. Now I'll go down to the paint node after the text leaves. Yeah, 150, I put a keyframe. I'll go 10 more frames out. And I will take the line all the way down. So now if we play the scene all the way through, we should see the line right on, the text right on, the text right off, and the line disappear as well. So this would be the call out that I'd do for this scene right here. So I'll play that. I'll make the full screen just so you guys can see everything a little bit better. So now if we start this from the very beginning, this is what the scene would look like with the call out. I will play that one more time. Putting the text in the tracker, it really does add a little bit more to your scene because if the text was just floating down there, and then the camera kept moving and the text was moving with the camera. It, to me, it doesn't look as clean or as crisp. 
So I like to add the tracker in there to help the text and whatever else you're calling out stay with that object. But yeah, so that was pretty much it. That was how I would do a call out in DaVinci Resolve. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, let me know. My name's Mac, and again, thanks for watching.